In today's video, we are gonna be getting rid of the distributor and the factory ECU. We're gonna be replacing it with Godzilla coils and an ECU out of a Crown Vic. And hopefully by the end of this video, this engine is gonna be running again on distributorless ignition. So let's get started. Welcome back to another video, everybody. So I have a little bit of downtime in between the autocrosses a couple weeks. So we are going to try to tackle getting this engine converted over to a distributorless ignition system and get it hopefully all tuned and running. So I have a base tune at this point to put into the computer. I just need to get it all installed onto the car. Uh, it has not yet been all installed on the car yet. I've test fitted a few things here and there, uh, but now is the time to get it all hopefully installed for the, the last time at this point. All right, a quick recap of all the parts that I'm using. So I'm using a, a EEC5 from like a luxury sedan, uh, 03, 04, so like a Crown Vic, Grand Marquis, uh, Marauder, those kind of cars. So that is a factory Ford ECU. The coils are from a Godzilla. The plug wires are from an LS. For the front cover, it's from an Explorer. The crank position sensor is from an Explorer. The trigger wheel is one that I designed and got cut and then got the dampener uh, machined out so it could just press onto the back of it. The cam sink will be from an Explorer. Uh, the engine harness is one from like another 5.0 engine that I have modified for all the for the coils. So I still need to get those plugs put on here, but this is just, you know, see a factory uh, 5.0 harness that I've kind of modified a little bit. And then the fender harness, the one that's in the fender that goes from the ECU up. It is, it started as the base V6 one that actually came from this car. I used it because I know it fits into the car. All the other plug wires will reach and are the right lengths and right genders and all that stuff for power and um, everything there. But I did have to obviously modify it since it was a V6 to add in the uh, two extra injectors and then all the wiring for the, the coils. But it was already the easy C5 connector, which made that nice and it's all the right lengths and everything like that. So just adding wires to it, moving wires around to work with, with the me. Crown Vic ECU. So that is all done. And we're basically at the point to start stripping everything out and putting all the new stuff in. And I already have a tune to go on it to, to hopefully get the car to start and start idling. And then we'll just have to go back and forth uh, with the guy to get it all tuned. But I got a couple weeks, as I said, to hopefully get that done. Uh, so this is all going through uh, EFI Dyno Tuning with the, the guy that runs that site. He'll be tuning the car basically remotely. But we are at the point of getting all this stripped out. So let me disconnect this battery and start pulling everything out and we'll start installing the new stuff in.
Okay, everything is installed. Uh, the fender harness, the engine harness, the coils, everything is connected and ready to go. Uh, there are a few things that I screwed up on. For one, the coils, I had them wired backwards. I could not find really any information on these Godzilla coils. They're just still so new, I guess. Uh, looking at some pictures of other engine harnesses, I tried to figure out uh, which ones were which pins. Uh, looking at Jolt, I think maybe Jolt Systems or something like that, they have uh, a harness to use Godzilla coils with uh, a Holly, which is pretty cool. So if you guys have a Holly and want to use Godzilla coils or have a Godzilla engine, uh, there's an adapter harness for all that stuff. But looking at that, I figured out that I had wired all of the, the power and the signal on the coils backwards. I kind of thought that it maybe didn't matter since it was just uh, uh, like a coil. I thought maybe one would be power and it didn't matter which one was power, which one was signal, but it does. Uh, it was still getting like, it was still firing a little bit. I, I, I had a, a test lead on here to just test everything out and it was still firing, but it was super weak. Uh, so once I switched those around, I had a nice uh, strong spark signal. Other things, uh, the, the coolant sensor going to the ECU I had on the incorrect pin, and that's just based on documentation that I went off of, but something had changed uh, in the tune, I guess, to run it on a different pin. So moved that around, tried three different pins, and finally got it to show up on the, the dash. So uh, engine uh, coolant temperature is working. Uh, coils are nice and strong. And then I don't know if you can really see this coil back here. Uh, when I designed the brackets, wasn't in the car. You know, it was just sitting on the stand. So I had plenty of room around the engine and not accounting for the, the brake booster. So there's just not enough room for this coil with this brake booster in here. Uh, so I had to cut the bracket and modify it a little bit. I actually only have one bolt holding that coil in because it's kind of got to sit at an angle. So that is one reason that I wasn't really trying to market these or anything like that. There has been multiple people that have asked me about uh, if they could buy a set or get the drawings and things like that. And at this point, I didn't know that they could, if they actually even worked. I knew they mocked up okay, but as far as putting them actually in the car and making sure everything fit, no idea. So it turns out, that doesn't work. I did have to modify it also on this side to clear for the, the alternator. So that is another modification that had to be done. So I've had to modify both sides to make them work on the car. So that is one thing that I just, I didn't want to put that out there or sell these or give them the drawings or anything like that, knowing that they didn't, if they worked on the car or not, that's just part of uh, R and D. And yeah, if I was ever to actually market these or anything, which I don't really plan to do, they would uh, definitely have to be redesigned. And from there, I think that kind of covers all the mistakes that I've done. Now you'll see that there is uh, a big opening right here. So I had the stock air box and mass airflow sensor in here and I am changing to a different mass airflow sensor for this engine. And I'm finally using one that I've been hoarding basically since high school. So I've been carrying this thing around for 15, over 15 years at this point. Uh, so we finally get to use it. So let me go grab it. All right, this is a cold air setup that I got from like a Terminator Cobra. As I said, way back in high school, it was uh, one that came into the dealership and they had to take off the aftermarket parts. So I got this thing for free. Uh, I have put on the, the elbow from the stock setup. I would like to get rid of this obviously, but it's just, it's too tight up a package in here right now to uh, figure out anything to fit or to fab up anything. So this is kind of what we need. Uh, I have had to modify this slightly, so I welded in this bolt in here that will kind of align with the 
like the pins that were used for the stock one. So I just put one in there, but it'll basically align with the holes in there to hold that. I have also had to cut and re-weld this bracket to uh, shorten it up a little bit to make it fit in here, but it is ready to install. Uh, it looks really sweet. So it is a 90 millimeter uh, mass airflow sensor, which is overkill for this engine, but the stock one was too small. So this will allow it to breathe pretty freely. I do have the 75 millimeter uh, throttle body on here. And as long as uh, we have all the parameters set up correctly in the tune, this won't really matter at being uh, larger and gives plenty of room for uh, growth if we ever need to do it. But that is what is going to be going into the car. It will look uh, pretty sweet. It's got at least this little bit of a heat shield because ideally you don't really want to run a cold air intake as you're just going to be pulling uh, hot air from the, the engine. I'd much rather kind of keep the stock set up or something that kind of is pulls from the fender area, but you also don't want the 90 that goes into the fender area because 90s also aren't good for uh, airflow. But I think having this little bit of a shield on there will will help will help it pull air from the fender headlight area so that is what we got going on so i will get that uh installed and i do have like this uh, little adapter bracket where i could have you know rewired this to work uh you know since i was rewiring everything else but i just put a little adapter on there that goes from the four pin to i think uh six pin that this uh that the later uh, Ford's use. So that is all ready to go. We will get that installed and then we can uh, start the car finally. All right, we are ready to start up. We got everything attached up. This is what I believe is the first car on YouTube at least to be 302 Windsor with Godzilla running on uh, the EC5. So basically a Crown Vic uh, ECU. First one I think on YouTube to be running. You guys ready? We got our little start switch right here so we can just start it up from out here. Let's go. The engine runs, it sounds pretty good. So this is just stage one of the, the tuning process. So this is just the startup. There is still a lot to go until we're actually able to rip it on an autocross course. Uh, so we are doing a remote tune through EFI Dyna tuning. So this is just stage one of idle, driving on the street. So it is drivable, uh, but it's at uh, just being able to drive and get uh, the different mass airflow values and then we'll need to do a half throttle pull. So no wide open, no racing, none of that quite yet. So we do have to go through the multiple stages of the tune. I think there's uh, three stages that we kind of need to work our way through until the car is good to go. But getting into just a start and idle has been uh, a little frustrating at times, but has been a huge accomplishment. So as I went over earlier, there were things that I did wrong in my wiring harness that I did have to fix to get to this point, but it starts up. Uh, I have gotten some questions about why I chose certain harnesses, so, and why I chose things instead of just using like an Explorer one. So Explorers do not have coils, individual coils. They have a coil pack. So for one, that ECU cannot be used. You would have to, you need to use uh, a, a ECU from like the 4.6 liters and the Crown Vic ones are just kind of the, the best ones to use for an engine swap like this. So Crown Vic, Grand Marquis, Marauders, all those kind of use the same uh, ECU strategy file. So that is why I chose that one. It's the best one to use for these engine swaps because it's just 
the one that has the most defined uh, definition for them to be able to figure out everything that they need to change to make it work on a 302. Uh, so that is why I went with that ECU. The, the engine harness and fender harness I used for one because I had it. So that was the main reason. There isn't one that I could go steal from any kind of car and uh, not have to modify. All the engine harnesses I would have had to modify. If I used one from like the 4.6, I would have had to maybe modify less on the coil side. I wouldn't have had to add all the coils obviously, but the, the mod motor is just so much wider. I would have had all kinds of different lengths and I would have had to then change all my lengths for the fuel injectors and everything like that. So for using the five liter engine harness was the least modification in my mind uh, to do. Everything lined up, I just had to add the, the coils. Then for the fender harness, I used the V6 one, basically because it already had the EC5 uh, harness on it. So I didn't have to hack in some other harness because you can't get those pins. And then I would have had to modify any other harness, but that one I know fits in this car. It, you know, it makes it, it has all the right lengths from the ECU all the way up to the, the fan control or the, the constant control relay module up here and the mass airflow, all, everything works and it's the right length. So that was the, the main reason. Also for doing the engine harness, everything is the right length. So it's a nice clean factory look. If you went and looked at the car, you wouldn't think that it's a hacked up harness that it, cause I did it the best way to not hack it up. I used uh, pins. So there is no solder, no butt splices, none of that stuff. Everything is crimp connections uh, with pins and connectors. So it is a factory harness. I used factory uh, plugs where possible. I think everything actually in here is a factory plug. I don't have any uh, aftermarket plugs like uh, Deutsch or Amp or any of that stuff. No, nothing is in here. Everything is factory plugs. So you'd be really hard to go over and look at this and not know that it wasn't a factory install other than it's, you know, it's uh, got individual coils. Um, but that is it for now. The car runs, it starts up at idles. I still need to go do the driving portions of the, the stage one, but for this video, we are done. So we still got a lot to go until we are actually getting this car back onto course. We got a little bit of time before the next autocross. So stay tuned. See you guys later. Thank you for watching.